In the meantime, a very, very brief introduction about myself, but most of you already know me because this is the second webinar of our series dedicated to the technology that in KRA we developed for the live event. It's time to move to the next technology that we have implemented on our speakers. The electronic beam steering, a technology that is getting more and more popular nowadays. We are not the only ones promoting electronic beam steering technology and that's great because the market is getting used more and more to this technique that give gives the user total control on the dispersion characteristics of the cluster, on the direction of the radiated beam, on the shape of the radiated beam at any frequency. So what is this uh, technique? Well, in a nutshell, it's something extremely simple from a theoretical point of view. As you see in the drawing, imagine that you have a cluster composed of several uh, line array elements, so several sources in the space that all play together, like this is a cluster. In any point of uh, the audience area and, and anywhere in the space in front of the cluster, the sound waves radiated by all the section of the array interact with each other and as we all know this interaction frequency dependent of course can be constructive or destructive or something in between depending on the phase relationships between these sound waves at the location we are considering the amount of summation and cancellation not only depends on the phase, but also on the amplitude of the sound waves at that point. For example, if you want complete cancellation of a frequency in a point, you need to have two sound waves arriving at that point completely out of phase with exactly the same amplitude, so that they completely cancel each other out. So, what is the idea behind the electronic beam steering technology. If the user can change, modify, affect the amplitude and the phase of each signal sent to each section of the array, he can, he can decide in which point of the space you want perfect summation between the sound waves and in which point of the space you prefer to have cancellation. In other words, you can change how the energy coming from the cluster is distributed in the space, playing with amplitude and phase of the signal sent to each section of the array. This sounds pretty simple, but of course uh, it's not easy to do well because the whole process is frequency dependent. So you need to control the shape of the beam frequency by frequency to be sure that the beam is properly steered, that the energy is properly distributed on the audience area. Plus, venues are very big, so there are a lot of points to consider uh, where we want energy and where we don't want energy. So, only very advanced techniques, especially uh, DSP power, uh, nowadays allow us to uh, be able to really control the shape and the direction of the beam with extremely high resolution. And this is thanks to the fact that we are using FIR filters to manage the amplitude and the phase of each signal. Now, what is an FIR filter? Most of you already know that very well. We can find nowadays FIR filters also on some mixer consoles. And FIR filters, you can think 
of an FIR filter like a, a black box where something is happening having an input signal and an output signal. These two signals must be digital. So FIR filters are digital filters. It means that the input signals and the output signals are digital signals, meaning that they are sequences of numbers called samples. How does an FIR filter work? Well, when you have an input signal, the first sample of the input signal enters the filter and it's multiplied by a certain coefficient. Then, in the second input sample enters the filter and it's multiplied by another coefficient. And so on. If your FIR filter features 400 coefficients, called sometimes taps, like 400 taps, it means that 400 input samples of your digital signal enter the filter, each one is multiplied by an appropriate coefficient, and then all these 400 numbers are summed together, and the result is of course a number, and this is the value of the first sample output by the filter. Very simple, but believe it or not, if you choose those 400 or how many the filter features coefficients in the proper way, you can create any transfer function you want. You want a shelving filter, a picking, a notch, a butterworth, a high pass, a low pass, just to change those coefficients and you can get all those kind of filters. But you can get also something extremely more complex than that, like the transfer function represented in this drawing. That is the transfer function of one single FIR filter. And look at the resolution in frequency. FIR filters are, are extremely powerful because they can manage amplitude and phase of the signals with an extremely high resolution in frequency and they can manage amplitude and phase independently. So they are very advanced uh, mathematical filters because in the end they are just a combination of uh, summation multiplications of coefficients. But this gives you an idea of uh, the possibility that you have nowadays, the control that you have on a cluster. This is our KH8, a very unique kind of uh, line array element. As you can see, each uh, cabinet, each box, is uh, uh, pre-wired and pre-connected to a frame that is uh, housing three units. Each unit is able to rotate around its own axis. So it means that the, the cluster goes up straight, but then each box can be oriented just rotating around its own axis. Of course, doing this, the compression drivers that are aligned in the center when you rotate the uh, the, the cabinets are not well aligned anymore, but having FIR filters on board, we can realign all the, the drivers and all the other components to create a perfect coherent emission. And on one single cabinet of K-Shade, which is a self-powered uh, box like all our uh, concert series speakers. On board you have two amplifiers, four channel each, uh, 2000 watt per channel. So this is the amount of energy that you have on board of this device. It's absolutely impressive. But what is what is interesting for me now is that you have eight channels of, ampli of amplifications and processing, and each channel is managed by an independent FIR filter, 
meaning that you have eight FIR filters per box. Imagine when you have like 12 boxes per side, the amount of FIR filters and that you have and the control that you have on the dispersion of the energy from such a device that we can see, that here we can see better, right? The three units are pre-wired in a frame, so you go up with the, with the motor, with the first frame, and then you join the next with four pins. Done. You join together two cables, power on one side and signal on the other side, and you go up. It's probably the quickest PA system ever, and uh, this is designed for the large, large scale application. And oh, here it's a, a tour that took place in the uh, United States last year or two years ago, if I remember well. And you can see the clusters mounted straight, the speakers, the single cabinets oriented the proper way toward the audience, and then the electronic beam steering taking care of creating a coherent beam shaped the right way to perfectly cover the entire venue. Here is another example. This, this was a, um, uh, an electronic music uh, festival. And we are talking about uh, huge uh, applications with a system that uh, it looks extremely, extremely compact. But what I want to mention in this picture is actually the side fields. In this case, they used our KH5 from the Mugello series. Different kind of cabinets, the Mugello series, this is the KH2. As you can see, in this case, you set the angles between the cabinets, so it looks kind of a more traditional line array, but absolutely it's not. Not only you have slim array technology and all the benefits that we discussed, but we decided to equip with the electronic beam steering technology also this series. Because even if you can adjust the angles and create your banana and aim the beam toward the audience, the radiation from a line array will never be perfect. The fact that you have angles between the cabinets is already creating some issues at some frequencies in some points of the venue, for example. But, thanks to the electronic beam steering technology, these self-powered speakers are able to behave like an ideal line array because any kind of comb filter, any kind of issue that you may have is compensated electronically calculating the appropriate FIR filters. I like also this picture of the Mugello series because even if uh, you, you can put the angles between the clusters, in this case the rental decided to go up with the cluster almost straight, almost no angles between the clusters, and then they aimed the beam down toward the audience electronically. Because, of course, it's much quicker to go up straight with the cluster. It takes less space in the, on stage and all the other advantages of a straight hang. And here we are at the speaker we were watching on the first picture I showed during the webinar. Our KH7. Looks like a column speaker. It actually is a column composed of four coaxial 12-inch woofers. Self-powered, each woofer is driven by an independent onboard amplifier channel and the system is mounted completely straight. No angles between the cabinets at all. Extremely quick, because of course you, you just insert the four pins, you go up, you put the next speaker, four pins up, and then you have an independent amplifier channel, 2000 watt at 4 ohm per channel, 
to drive each individual coaxial buffer. So when you have a line like this, you beam, you move, you aim the beam down electronically. And notice that the, the, the system is so slim that it's even smaller than the, the truss that it's used to suspend it. Another nice picture that I like, this is here in Italy, in our Colosseum in Rome. And that was an event where the gladiator was projected, the movie with the orchestra playing live. And in a place like this, being discreet is a great advantage. So the, the K7 being so compact, but so powerful, it's a great solution in this kind of applications where also the look of, a, of the PA plays an important role. And if you are wondering if this speaker is weather resistant, the, the answer is absolutely yes. Even if it's self-powered, the amplifier is on board, but it's completely sealed. And this is a picture of a fixed, a permanent installation in, the theme, in a theme park in Hong Kong, the Ocean Park. And the speakers stay there night and day, all year long, and are absolutely resistant to the weather, bad weather conditions. And now, watching this picture, I think, doesn't surprise anybody anymore. KH7 clusters, two clusters for every side of the rectangle so that we have a perfect stereo image left and right uh, all around the arena. Extremely quick to go up and down because in the end it's only six cabinets per cluster, which is nothing, six cabinets uh, for a live event. But uh, thanks to the electronic beam steering, we were able to open the beam in the vertical plan enough to cover even the highest seats and so what you have here is a, um, a very good example of application of all the technologies that we have described so far and also here i think it's pretty impressive this picture because if you compare the size of the pa with the size of the stage and the size of the plaza where this concert took place, we are talking about pop music, live, it's pretty impressive. It's only eight cabinets per side, which is really a ridiculous number of cabinets for a pop live event. In uh, Here there were almost 100,000 people uh, enjoying the show. So it's. I hope this gives an idea of uh, how combining all these technologies together result in, uh, in systems uh, that for a rental company can be extremely convenient.